Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marilyn Murphor, president of Ori Georgetown Technical College. I'm really proud and pleased to see all of you here today. Beautiful day that we have and wonderful community leaders that we have and our governor. Pleased to have you here, especially given this period of time in our lives, but we have so much to be thankful for. So I want to welcome you as we're hosting this afternoon. Thank you for being here. Today, I have the distinct honor of introducing the mayor of Myrtle Beach, the city's first female mayor, sworn into office in 2018. She brings into the office at least 35 years of leadership, business, and she is an owner of Better Brands, Inc., BJ Investments, the Magnolia Roll, Shopping Center, and the Little White Dress Bridal Boutique. She's a recipient of many, many awards honoring her commitment to the area's youth and to our veterans. Currently, she serves as a member of the Coastal Alliance Board the Grand Strand Area Transportation Study Policy Committee, the Municipal Association of South Carolina, and the Urban Land Institute. She and her husband, Brown, are members of Seacoast Vineyard Church. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome me. Please welcome me. Please. <laughs> Yeah, please well, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Brenda Bethune, Madam Mayor of the City of Myrtle Beach. Thank you, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, you're going to hear some good news from our governor and from others today, and, and we need that. Uh, but I have a little bit of good news for you as well. And November is quickly coming upon us, and that means that the 1,825 days of 2020 are almost over. <laughs> and I think we're looking forward to it. But seriously, this has been um, a very challenging year for all of us, but it has been especially challenging for our business community, our small businesses who are hurting greatly. Um, in the Myrtle Beach area alone, our businesses have suffered, and this should have been, this summer should have been our peak season, when we should have made enough to get us through the hard, long winter, and that's not the case. Some of our businesses have suffered 45, to, or their businesses have been down 45 to 60 percent, and some more than that. Some are actually having to close their doors. We need to get them the help that they need to stay in business and to thrive, and we need them to be open and ready for our visitors next spring. South Carolina has always been resilient. Over the past few years, we have recovered from storms, from floods, and we will do the same with COVID. And our governor continues to be at the forefront of keeping us strong every step of the way. Governor McMaster is leading the fight to ensure that not only will we, will we recover from COVID, but that we will be stronger and more prosperous as we do so. Today, he comes to us with the SC CARES Act that will give us the help that we need. Governor, we thank you for being here today. We thank you for your leadership during these trying times, and there are better days ahead. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our governor, Henry McMaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bethune, and I'm delighted to be here, particularly with such outstanding leaders, and also with you in beautiful Myrtle Beach and wonderful South Carolina, which is the best place on earth to live, work, and raise a family. And if that were not so, then these businesses from around the world would not be coming to look to hire South Carolinians when they invest hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. That's because they see something in us that they like. And as Mark Clark, the great general, said, there's more patriotism in South Carolina per square inch than any place else in the world. 
And what that translates to is the kind of resilience that Mayor Bethune spoke of a minute ago and the spirit that we have, and that spirit is alive, and we're getting through this virus so much better than a lot of our other, other states are. It's because we've used a different approach. We've spent the money carefully. We never closed. South Carolina has always been open when the virus arrived. We didn't go into the essential and non-essential type of questions because there's no way to draw the right kind of line. What we did, we looked at the businesses, the activities, concerts, beauty parlors, restaurants, unfortunately, massage parlors, things like that, where they have a lot of spread, maybe barbershops, where there's close physical contact. And we had a list of those places that were likely to cause the spread, cause, according to the experts, because of that physical contact. We learned that it wasn't just touching, but it was an aerosol. It would go in there, which made our decision even, even better, even stronger. But we never shut down. Uh, Muhammad Ali said when the young, young fellow asked him, he said, Champ, didn't you get knocked down one time? He said, son, I've never been down. I'm either up or getting up. <laughs> well, we've never been closed. And we're not going to close because now we know, we know more about the virus. We don't know all about it, but we know a lot more now than we did then. And we can open up and stay open and prosper and be careful at the same time. But there are a lot of businesses that have been hurt, but I would, I would recommend that you look at some of the other states that are still closed completely. They, in Michigan, they closed down automobile manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Where you got people coming through the door, it's very easy to check the temperature, to get the mask, to do all those things that are necessary. They closed them down completely. In some states, they're arresting people going to church. They're even arresting people who are gathering up in the parking lots outside of the church. We did not enter into all of that here because we got better sense. Mm -hmm. We use the carpenter's rule, which is measure twice, cut once. If it's not necessary to put a restriction on it, then don't put one on it. If it's not going to produce the desired result, don't. So that's why it, the sun is shining on South Carolina right now. But we know that there are businesses that have been hurt, some by restrictions, either from the state, from the counties, from the cities, the limitations that were placed on them, others just because of a lack of confidence and concern by the citizens themselves not wanting to go out. But right now, we don't have anything that is closed in South Carolina. It's been that way for some time now. So we're on the rebound. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But we know that there's some that need some help. And the CARES Act gave us, it's our tax money, went to Washington, came back <laughs> $1.9 billion, and that has been allocated wisely by our General Assembly. And part of that was, uh, for business purposes, 500 million first went back into the uninsurance fund, and unemployment uninsurance fund, and uh, recently another 420 million, which will take us back up, we believe, to where we were before the virus began, which means no tax increase on businesses for the unemployment insurance fund. But the other thing that the, the legislature did that showed great wisdom, and I thank them for doing it, adopted the idea it was generated by Accelerate SC, which you may remember, a great group of people. And that is to, we need to go back in and help some of those businesses who were not able to take advantage of the earlier opportunities. Typically, that's just small businesses that didn't have an accountant or lawyers or others that were skilled in manipulating that kind of process. So what the General Assembly has done has provided $40 million for small businesses, minority-owned businesses, there are various qualifications who are hurt by the virus, $40 million and also $25 million for nonprofit organizations, small ones that have been hurt by the virus. And that is a great thing, but the, the, that is the good news. But remember, the application time, which must be done online, closes at 11.59 on Sunday, November the 1st. Say again, 11.59, Sunday night, November the 1st. Once that clock strikes midnight, you can't apply anymore. So if you qualify, and Ms. Oakley will explain in one second here how you qualify uh, with the Department of Administration. So if you do, please qualify and 
we're going to do all of us here committed to seeing that we get we, we just get rolling and get back up on our feet completely as soon as possible so I'd ask for Ms. Oakley, Kelly Oakley, if you will please, from the Department of Administration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today because just like the governor said, there is a deadline for these two applications to be able to apply for these grants. And it's very important that we make sure our small businesses, our minority and small businesses, as well as our nonprofits across the state who have continued to serve citizens over this pandemic, over the time frame, that they have what they need to continue to move forward and to continue to do the great things that they do every day in our communities across the state. So again, to reiterate, I don't, I don't think we can say it enough, Governor, 11.59 p.m., on November 1st is the deadline. And it is an online application process. Folks can go to accelerate.sc.gov to find everything they need to know about the application, as well as some tools and resources to help them through the process. When they go to the homepage of accelerate.sc.gov, there is a tab at the top, the CARES Act tab. If they click through there, they'll find everything that they need to know. So let me first give you a little bit of background on both of these so that you can uh, just understand what the requirements are. Starting first with the minority and small business relief grant program, which awards grants to minority and small businesses uh, to reimburse qualifying expenditures for providing services or revenue loss during COVID-19 or due to COVID-19. And that time frame for them to experience those things would be March 1st of this year through December 1st, 2020. As the governor mentioned, Act 154 allocated $40 million for this program. So when it comes time to award these grants, the grant awards will range anywhere from $2,500 to $25,000. Now to be eligible to apply, there is some criteria and that's what I like to make sure that all of the small and minority businesses are aware of. First of all, they can employ 25 or fewer employees. They also have to be physically located within the state of South Carolina and be able to show some proof of business registration. And we had a question at the press conference yesterday if tax, doc uh, tax documentation like Schedule C would work, and that will. Um, they also have to have been in operation from September 13th, 2019 to present, and they have to be able to show some type of or demonstrate some type of financial or operational impact due to COVID-19. Now, one of the other things the legislation did is it allowed for some prioritization as to who could receive these grants. And the first prioritization is for minority businesses, and that would mean the owner is a U.S. citizen and either socially or economically disadvantaged. Um, applicants that have received no other aid or assistance before, such as the Paycheck Protection Program, would also receive some priority in this, as well as businesses with 15 or fewer employees, and also those businesses that are able to demonstrate the greatest financial need. Now, what these can be used for, these funds, staffing costs, operation costs, facility costs, personal protective equipment, and revenue loss. The legislation also established a panel that will review all of these applications once the application process window closes. And qualified recipients can expect to receive word in early December, and then they will receive their reimbursements by mid-December. So this really is a fast-moving process. Now let me just briefly go over what the qualifications are for the nonprofit relief grant program. This awards grants to the nonprofit organizations to reimburse those qualifying expenditures for providing services or for revenue loss during the COVID-19. And again, that is the same time frame. That's March 1st of this year through December 1st of 2020. Now, just like the governor said, this program, uh, the legislation allocated $25 million for this program. So when it comes time to award these grants, the range will be anywhere from uh, increments of $2,500 to $50,000. Now, for a nonprofit to be eligible for these grants, they have to be a registered 5013C with the IRS. They also have to be registered as a public charity with the state of South Carolina with the Secretary of State. And they do have to be physically located as well as providing services within the state of South Carolina. And just like the other grant program, they have to be operating at least from September 13th, 2019 to present. And they do need to be able to demonstrate some kind of financial or operational impact due to COVID-19. And just like the other grant as well, there is some, uh, the legislation allows for some prioritization to who receives these grants. And first, it's those applicants that have received no other assistance, such as the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, expenditures related to food assistance, including prepared meals, rent or mortgage assistance, utilities assistance, mental health counseling, health care services, criminal domestic violence or children's advocacy, advocacy services, and then arts and cultural items or activities. Same thing too, these funds can go for staffing costs, operational costs, 
facility costs, the personal protective equipment that uh, these nonprofits have had to purchase to be able to operate safely in accordance with, with the guidelines that are out there, and revenue loss. Again, legislation set up a panel who will review this, these group of applicants, and qualified recipients can expect to re receive word in early December, and then they will also re receive their reimbursements by mid-December. Um, I know I've just given a lot of information. Members of the media, you received a sheet of paper that has all of this highlighted and spelled out for you, as well as the links where folks need to go. If you would please share with your readers and your viewers that application link, as well as the accelerate.sc.gov. We have a ton of resources out there because we know that this is, it's a process to go through this. There has to be verification, and we want to make sure that the people who need these funds are getting these funds so that they can continue to do the great work they do across our state. We also have set up a call center, the South Carolina CARES Call Center, which operates 8.30 to 5 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. That number is 803-670-5170. We have a great staff with the Department of Administration who is set up, and they are there to answer questions uh, from the smallest question to the largest question, also just to kind of do some hand-holding through the process to make sure that our small businesses and our nonprofits have what they need. Additionally, we have a lot of great collaborating organizations across the state who have said, hey, we're in the communities, we know who our small businesses are, we know who our nonprofits are, we will be willing to sit down with them to meet them where they're at and help them get through this process. I know we've said it a lot, but I do want to reiterate one more time. The deadline to apply for both of these grants is 11.59 p.m. November 1st, and we do strongly encourage the South Carolinians who need this to go ahead and make sure that they take um, the, the opportunity to do so. At this point, one more time? Okay, I, I'll go a little slower. 803-670-5170. I think they're going to do questions at the end, okay? And at this point, I would like to introduce Dr. Dolores DaCosta. She is the Executive Director with the Commission on Minority Affairs. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good afternoon to all of you. First, let me just thank you, Governor, for your leadership. The Commission on Minority Affairs have followed you throughout this COVID event, and we have worked with DHEC and all of the agencies to make sure that all of our communities receive information and all the things that they need for testing around the state of South Carolina. And we will follow you to the end. Thank you so much. The Commission for Minority Affairs, we focus primarily on ethnic minority communities. That is the African American, Native American, Hispanic, Latinos, and, a, and the Native populations. Throughout this COVID situation, those communities have been devastated from one way or another. The businesses, many have shut down, and we are trying our best to encourage them to go online to apply for these funding. The funding may not help some. Because once you've closed, once you've shut down, it is hard to come back to be a thriving business. But for those who we can help, we are encouraging them to apply for the funding. And as you've heard, we have our partners around the state of South Carolina waiting to assist all of these folks who need assistance. We have 10 days. That's it, 10 days. I am one of three who will be on the panel along with Commerce and Revenue to make the final decisions on these grant applications for small and minority businesses. We help along with state administration to build an application that was not too difficult, but one that folks can live with. This is a short window that we have, and we've been moving very fast. State administration have been working over time to make sure that we have everything in place. The applications went live on the 19th. There were a couple of hiccups. They immediately fixed it. We have until midnight next Sunday, the 1st of November. After that, those live links will shut down, and we will not be accepting any more applications. So please, help us to spread the word. We know that a lot of people are hurting, a lot of our businesses. But if we don't take care of our small businesses, then we have failed. It is the small business of South Carolina that makes our economy strong. And we must do everything in our power to make sure that we are doing everything to help them to become resilient businesses. 
one of our partners who I'm going to introduce right now, Ms. Michelle Abraham, with the South Carolina Small Business Development Centers. We are in the process of doing one last pitch, sponsoring or hosting webinars next week along with them to go through the application step by step. If you would go to our webpage at cma.sc.gov, you will see when those webinars will be uh, scheduled. At this time, I will have Michelle come and talk a little bit about what she's doing. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am the State Director for the Small Business Development Centers. We have been in South Carolina for about 41 years, helping small businesses throughout that time. Uh, our, that's our mission, is to make sure that our small businesses in South Carolina are successful, are thriving, are growing. We do that by providing consulting, private consulting, very confidential, at no fee, training programs, and helping you access other resources that can assist you in your growth. So we're very, very pleased to be a part of this program. I also want to thank the governor and the members of the legislature for their leadership throughout this COVID pandemic and for this particular legislation that is hopefully going to help a lot of our small businesses that were not able to take advantage of some of the other programs that we have out there. The uh, staff that I have, we cover the entire state, all 46 counties. We have about 60 people. Our, our counselors or consultants have all owned small businesses themselves, so they've walked the walk. They understand what you're going through, and we very much want to be able to help you get through this process as well. It is very fast timing. Uh, there are some steps that you have to get through, so we are here to try to help hand walk you through that process. Any questions you have, we're going to try to help you make that happen. Uh, we helped thousands of people in the state understand and apply for the economic injury and PPP loans when they came out in advances. So please take advantage of our services. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can. the easiest way is to go to our website, and that is www.sc, for South Carolina, sbdc.com. That stands for South Carolina Small Business Development Centers. You can register at the, the little blue button at the top, and there's also a locations tab at the top of the website, the landing page, that can tell you where all of our offices are and give you contact information for individual offices. So again, we're here to help. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We want to make sure that you're able to take advantage of this. And now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing to you a local business owner. Mr. Mike Chestnut is the owner of a restaurant, and you'll see by his garb um, here locally. And he is going to be able to talk to you a little bit about the impact that his business has felt as a result of the COVID crisis. Mike? Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Governor, for being here today. And thank you for all you have done for our state of South Carolina. To the governor and to all the other officials here, again, as you heard, my name is Mike Chestnut, small business owner here in the city of Myrtle Beach. We've, um, you know, 2020 was going to be our, our knockout year. Thanks to all the uh, support we got from the governor and thanks for all the support from the Chamber of Commerce. But who, who would have ever thought that old man COVID would come this way and change a lot of things? It's been a trying time. It's been a... It's been tough on small businesses, and it's stuff like this is, um, excuse me, <laughs> sometimes I get a little emotional. Um, it's stuff like this, what it's going to take to get things turned around. And I can't say enough on behalf of the small businesses throughout the Grand Strand and Myrtle Beach, Governor, how much this is really going to help our small businesses. It's been a challenging time. Me, personally, we had to close about three weeks at our restaurant, got back opened up. And it's just been, you know, like the governor said, you know, we've been open, but people have been hesitant about coming out. It's been challenging. But this grant is going to help us to, whether it's paying our payroll or putting inventory, or it is going to be a big help, I'm telling you. I was, I was on the phone this morning talking to some, another small business owner this morning telling him about it. He's excited about it. This is the stuff that we need in order to help us to recover 
And as someone said earlier, small businesses is the backbone of our economy. And we just glad, and, and Governor, I can't tell you enough how much we really do appreciate this program and all that you've done for the Grand Strand in the Myrtle Beach area. Thank you guys for listening to me. Um, please come out and support our small businesses. Uh, we're trying to get back going good, and, and we couldn't do it without you and without these kind of programs. Now I would like to introduce Ms. Karen Reardon, the President of the Myrtle Beach Chamber of Commerce. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, again, I want to echo the comments made today and bring it down to a little bit more of a local perspective. Um, certainly, tourism in South Carolina has been one of the hardest hit industries by COVID-19, and our economic recovery has been the slowest of all industries. We've certainly felt that impact here in Myrtle Beach, and I know my colleagues across the state in Charleston, Columbia, Hilton Head, Greenville, and so forth have all felt keenly the hardships of COVID-19. Statewide weekly tourism revenues have dropped by a third or more throughout the summer and into our fall season. Despite some recovery during the spring and summer months, year-to-date statewide hotel occupancy is still down nearly 30%. Our state's admissions tax collections this summer have been about half what they were in the summer of 2019. The economic hardships of COVID-19 have been widespread in our tourism businesses universally shared by all segments of that hospitality economy, hotels, restaurants, golf courses, retail, and attractions alike. And it's through the job loss and subsequent loss of income for South Carolinians that the effects of COVID really hit home. As of September, the number of leisure and hospitality jobs was still down more than 17% statewide. Locally, our hospitality businesses know just how difficult this year has been. Horry County represents just 6.9% of the state's permanent population, but made up nearly 10% of the state's initial unemployment claims back in March. These numbers show that our primarily tourism-based workforce was disproportionately hit by the pandemic. And while we have some recovery in lodging, our occupancy is still down 37% this year and our Horry County ATAX collections are down 28% compared to last year. Of course, in any crisis, it is often the small business owners and their employees who feel the financial effects the most. The Myrtle Beach Area Chamber represents more than 2,700 businesses and nonprofit organizations in the Grand Strand, and more than 95% of them are indeed designated as small businesses. So as you can imagine, since before October 9th, we have been telling every small business and nonprofit in this community to wait for that application link to open and to get going and to get themselves applying uh, for this much needed assistance. Uh, so many of these businesses are hospitality based. Right now, the tourism businesses uh, in our local economy represent 80,000 jobs. Most people don't realize that. That's a lot of jobs here. We've been fortunate in this state, however, to have the leadership that understands the importance of the economic health and the need to provide for economic recovery as we continue to cope with this pandemic. On behalf of the local tourism industry and our business community, I too would like to thank Governor McMaster and the legislature for the leadership that they have shown during this crisis. And especially right now for providing this grant opportunity for our nonprofit organizations and those small and minority owned businesses through the state's CARES Act funds. Again, I would encourage every eligible business in the Grand Strand to go forward and try uh, to utilize the minority and small business relief grant program and the nonprofit relief grant program. This is a timely opportunity, as you've heard, it's perishable. It concludes at 12.59 p.m. on November 1st. And so therefore, we've got to work really, really quickly and really hard to get the word out to everyone to take advantage of this so that we can get on the road to recovery. So once again, thank you, Governor McMaster, for being here, for your continued support uh, as we uh, try to get our state's tourism economy and the small business economy back on the road to recovery. Thank you, and again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that, uh, one of the smartest things we did was put all of us up in the shade. I see. 
Yeah, if y'all could come forward and there's some, you can get a little closer. And <laughs> we won't cook out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, these decisions are, are easy to make when you have good input from people and understand the facts. Decisions are not hard. It's getting the facts that's the hard part. And without input from people, a lot of whom are, are here looking this way, we can't make these, make these decisions. So this was a good one. Glad it's helping. And the reason we're here, I emphasize, is because a lot of times these great programs come along and nobody knows about them and they miss the boat. They don't apply. So that's why this is our fifth press conference in di different parts of the state. And particularly this part that has really been hit hard. It's a delight to see so many leaders and, and so much interest to come out. So with that, if anyone has any questions, all of us here will be try will try to answer. Um, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. Second Welcome. of all, I have to have another and please Wait a minute. But, um, Wait, can you say that again? I was listening to the airplane. <laughs> Well, congratulations, you just barely made the deadline, <laughs> which was six months prior to when we issued yes, the first yes. executive order. Wait a minute, is okay? I'm right here. Um, it, he, he, the governor is exactly right. Because you started operating before September 13th, you are eligible. I cannot give you the specific answer to your question, but I know that that question has been raised. Uh, we have worked on some FAQs. If you will see me after the press conference, I'll call up that document. I believe the answer to that question is in there. And if it's not, I will personally get your name and number, and I will make sure to get you in touch with somebody who can answer that question for you. I, th I believe in the application form through every step there there does allow space for the uh, for the business applicant to be able to give some justification or some, some explanation so that you can explain those types of things because obviously it's understandable that if you're just starting up those those things are going to be a bit higher than if you had been in, in in business for a while so again I will get you a specific answer but I think you should be able to explain on your have you have you, you've started the application process yeah, I've okay the yeah so I'll make sure that we I'll, I'll make sure that we get you some specific help, okay? All right, thank you. Just see me afterwards. Is the, applica is the application easy enough to where a third grader can do it? Is it one of the... Okay, that's good. Yes, ma'am. Come on in a little bit. It's cool. It's On behalf of about five million South Carolinians, I thank you for that spirit, and we've, uh, it's all over the state. We've heard a number of stories like this. Would you like to address that? Yeah, come, come over here, okay. please. Um, first of all, thank you for sharing your story, because like the governor said, it, unfortunately, you're not the only one, and I know that doesn't make it any easier. Um, that, is, that is the time frame, and, and here's why, uh, because we have multiple people from across the state, state applying, and, and um, as you heard, 
there's panels set up because these applications have to be reviewed. All of the documentation that's provided, you know, they have to look at it, confirm, and make sure, not that you wouldn't be legitimate, but yes, that you are legitimate because they want to make sure that folks like you who need these resources are able to get them. And so really, I mean, you've probably done things like this before. That's a very yeah. fast process. It's a fast process. And, and I know it doesn't feel like it to you as the person on the, on the receiving end of what's going on, uh, but to be notified in early December and, and, and to have that reimbursement by then, I wish we could do it faster. But, but like I said, there's going to be so many applicants they've got to go through and they've got to make sure that the people who need it most are the ones who get it. So I, I know that that's not probably what you were looking for, but they are trying to go as fast as they possibly can to assist you and other, other businesses like you across the state. Yes, 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 and they, and they, and they will look at all that because you have to submit that type of documentation, so, and, and yes, and thank you, and, and, and like I said, if we could give it today, I know, I know everybody up here feels like we would love to be able to do that, and, well, thank you for, thank you for what you're doing. The panel worked with state admin to create an application that was user friendly. And we do have priorities in how they, uh, how we break down or disseminate who's first in line. And with that, we will look at first those people who got absolutely nothing. And then that's the first group we are going to fund. Someone who got nothing from the CARES Act that came through in June. Then we will look at the second group. That will be folks who got some, but had new expenses that, that incurred after they got the, um, the first wave of money. And then we will make those appropriations at that time. So sounds like you did not get anything from PPP. Right. So it's crazy that you would even submit our information to do this, but it's like you knew what you were looking at. But right. when you're changing operations, that's not the case. Sure. So when, just like you were told, put that in the narrative. Mm -hmm. So we will know that you got a little, but the operations kept going and the expenses kept growing. And we will take all those things into consideration as we allocate these dollars. Yeah. Yes. So that's going to be another another thing that they'll be easily made aware of. And then too, the demerits are, are definitely helping them aware of that. Fair play. Yes, sir. I am so excited. I mean, I really think that you put your heart and your faith out there. So it's not to be a burden on the system. I bought insurance. It has um, insurance to cover clothes. insurance premiums, but we did talk about rent, lease, utilities. I would add it and let, and we'll go through it and make that decision, I'm that determination.
work more than me to enlighten myself in what the work is about to be written. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm looking at these lines and I didn't get to my extension yet. And this is scary. You know, I got three people working for me. I don't think they pay attention to every, every move. Well, you got a you got a, a very uh, active press over here that, that might echo those thoughts. Of course, that, that is, you're right. That's that's an insurance policy question. They all have exclusions and limitations, and some of that is controlled by the Department of Insurance. Some of that is controlled by legislation. Uh, so. Okay, we understand. I understand. That gentleman, yes, sir. Well, that, well that, that's a very good question. We, we, we get that question. I understand it's a, it's a hardship. But according to the experts and the data and the experience, it's the it's the late night at the at the bars that is a. Right. I understand, and we we all we're we're vigilant and trying to do the the best, and all we've heard from a lot of people and a lot of different kind of businesses and we're taking all that into consideration yeah, as, as those can't we can't make any promise at this point yes sir. over here anyone yes sir We discussed that uh, before this press conference, and I, I think that our our leadership is would would favor uh, small some small small business relief as well as local uh, municipal relief, county and municipality relief. That ought to be a part of it. If something happens, we we have no uh, very little control over over what what happens in Washington, but we're watching it closely. Yes, ma'am. Anyone? Yes. Executive order about that time frame is from. So right now, that that's where it stands. 
if I could though, the the small business development centers, if you want some help with just coaching and helping to think through where you're headed, what you can do, what options you have, we're certainly willing to help you. And again, there's no charge for that. One more question in the back. Yes, sir. excluded. Um, that's one of the things that the panel will look at when we talk about citizenship. We are also going to look at the green card holder. Um, but as far as people who are completely out of business, that's a different category because there will not be enough funding to put somebody back in business. Our, our goal is to try to salvage those who are struggling to try and stay alive, try to stay ahead. Um, but if someone's out of business within that time frame, it does not hurt to apply because maybe they need just a small amount of money to get them started. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming. And thank all of you.